Hey dudes, Dude the Builder here. And in this episode of Zig and Death, we're going to be talking about tuples. And uh, a, a tuple is kind of like uh, an anonymous struct and uh, kind of like an array that can have values of different uh, types. Um, when we talked about structs, we saw that uh, pretty much when we define a struct, we assign it to a constant and give it a name, and that's going to be the name associated with that struct type. And the fields also have names, but in the case of a tuple, uh, it's kind of like the definition of a struct, like we're going to see uh, here. But the fields don't have any names, and the tu and the uh, and the uh, uh, the tuple itself is not going to have any name. So here, basically, uh, we are defining this uh, tuple type right here, literally where we put the type of this constant that we are uh, defining here. So tuple A will ha we'll have the tuple type with uh, a U8 field and a Boolean field, okay? And then we assign it uh, the tuple value using the tuple literal syntax, which we've been using extensively in, in, in previous videos up till now. But we hadn't formally introduced it, uh, but now you see that this is basically the official tuple syntax. Uh, when you have the dot and the curly braces, and inside you're going to have the list of values that are uh, the values of the fields of this tuple. Here we're using the any uh, format specifier to print out uh, that tuple. So let's see that output. We have it here in this first line, and as you can see, uh, this would be the tuple itself, okay? And it tells us that the type of that tuple is main dot main struct, and it gives it a unique uh, ID, okay? So uh, this is in accordance with the fact that tuples are uh, anonymous uh, data structures, okay? So Zig will assign it a name, basically generating a unique name for each one. Next up, we're going to see that we can uh, index into tuples using the, the indexing uh, operator with the square brackets, okay? Here, we're going to be taking a look at uh, field 0 or element 0, if you, if, if you look at it from an array-like uh, uh, viewpoint. And you can also see that tuples have a length field, like arrays and slices which will tell you how many uh, fields uh, the tuple has, okay? So, uh, when we look at the output once more, we see, in effect, that tuple A0, uh, zero, index 0, would be field 0 of that tuple, has the value 42, and the len of tuple A is indeed 2, okay? So it has uh, two fields or uh, two elements, if you look at it from a, an array-like uh, point of view. Now, um, you could also uh, access the fields like uh, if it were a struct using the dot notation, but since uh, tuple fields don't have uh, string names, you do have to use a number uh, as the name of the field, and in order to use a number in Zig as the name of a field, you have to do you have to use this special syntax with the at sign and the double quotes around the number. And uh, as a side note, that uh, notation with the at sign and the double quotes can be used wherever an identifier can be used. It's basically allowing us to use uh, any, uh, any type of identifier as an identifier in Zig. And in that case, we can use numbers or we could even use uh, reserved words or keywords in the language like we're doing here. We're defining a constant here called while. And uh, that would be allowed without any issues, okay? So going back to tuples, we can use then uh, the dot syntax to access a field, but since the field uh, names are numbers, we have to use this at and the double quotes, okay? So in the output, that would be uh, this line right here. And as you can see, we accessed the first field successfully, okay? Next up, we're going to see that, like arrays, we can concatenate tuples uh, using the plus plus operator. So here, we're defining another tuple uh, called uh, struct uh, tuple B. 
and uh, we were assigning it uh, 3.14 uh, and negative 42 are, are the values because uh, they're of type F16 and I32. And we can then use the plus plus operator to uh, concatenate tuple A and tuple B. And when we look at the output of that concatenation, we're going to see that in effect we have that tuple uh, C has uh, the values from tuple A, the 42 and the true, and the values from tuple B, the 3.14 and the negative 42. Okay? And uh, this stresses the, the fact that in a tuple you can have uh, elements of different types. If you have a tuple where all of the elements are of the same type, um, you can uh, concatenate it with an array that uh, is of that type too. So here we have an array of U8s, one, two, three, and we are uh, declaring here a tuple D of four, five, six, and then we concatenate the array with the tuple, and we print that out, and we see that uh, here result. Okay, so we have in effect the one, two, three, and the four, five, six, and it's telling us that the type of the result is an array of six U8. Okay, so concatenating a tuple to an array will result in a new array being created. Also, uh, you can iterate uh, through the fields of a tuple with an inline four. Okay, um, so this is a comp time uh, uh, context here where we're gonna be iterating over the fields of the tuple, kind of like we can do with the fields of a struct using uh, comp time uh, type reflection. Well, uh, in the case of the tuple, we can iterate directly, okay, over those uh, fields. So uh, here we're also uh, iterating over uh, a range, uh, unbounded range starting at zero. So we can have the index of each of the values. And we're simply just printing out, okay, each value and the index, as we can see uh, here. In this line right here, we have the index and the corresponding values separated by commas. Next up, we're going to see uh, another instance where a tuple is uh, very similar to an array, is that uh, if you have a pointer to a tuple, it will also have the special capabilities that a pointer to an array has, meaning that you can uh, index into it using the square brackets and the pointer will be dereferenced automatically behind the scenes um, as if you were indexing directly into the tuple, okay? Another uh, common behavior with arrays is that tuples can be uh, repeated with the star star, okay, uh, operator. So here we're creating a tuple E by multiplying with star star tuple A times two, okay? So we should get uh, a new tuple with basically the same contents as tuple A twice, okay? And uh, we can see that here, tuple E, 42 true, 42 true, okay? And uh, one of the interesting ways that tuples are used within Zig um, in the standard library, for example, is that it allows you basically to have a function that uh, is similar to what uh, variable arguments are in other languages, the var args concept, that you can have a function that takes any number of arguments. Uh, well, directly at the language level, Zig doesn't have that uh, feature, but you can accomplish pretty much the same uh, by defining a variable that takes a tuple, okay, and then using comp time reflection. So if we go here to uh, after main, we're defining this uh, function called var args in Zig. It's taking a, a parameter x, which is of any type. And then within that function, the first thing we're going to grab is the type info of x. And we're going to do some checks here. Okay, We're going to check first if the type info is indeed of a struct type, because tuples are uh, like structs. Um, anonymous versions of structs. So their type info will be uh, of this uh, specific uh, field of that tag union, the struct type. And if, if it is, then there is an additional field in that uh, tag union uh, field called struct that's called is, is, that's called is tuple. 
And that will tell us, in effect, if this struct is a tuple or if it's a normal struct with, with named fields, okay? And in this case, we're interested in uh, a tuple uh, per se because we're going to be using an inline four here to iterate over fields of the tuple, and we can't do that over a normal struct. So we're checking if it isn't a tuple, we're going to panic. Uh, we're, in both cases, we panic here using the panic built-in. And if everything's okay, then we iterate with an inline 4 over the fields of the tuple and print them out, okay? So that's what you see in, in, this, uh, in these three lines of output. These are the fields of that tuple, okay? Bring, uh, being printed out each in, uh, on a separate line, okay? So this is basically uh, achieved by this function call right here. We're calling the function, we're passing in a tuple, and you see the different uh, values of different types. So basically, you are achieving the same thing as having a, a function that can take a variable number of, ar of arguments, okay? Now, we're gonna demonstrate that you can only use it with a tuple, because let's uncomment uh, this code right here. We're creating here a struct that has named fields, A and B, and we're gonna create an instance of that struct and we're going to try to call this function with that instance of the struct. And let's see what happens. Let's clear the screen. And as you can see, we uh, get a runtime panic that says not a tuple. So our, our panic is being triggered, okay? Uh, specifically in uh, the line where we check that is tuple field of uh, the struct type info type, okay? So Let's uh, comment that back out. And here I have an example of just calling that function with something that isn't uh, neither a, a struct nor a tuple. Okay, just a plain old uh, integer literal. And in this case, once again, we get the panic, uh, not a tuple. And this time it's failing in the first test where we're testing if indeed that is a struct and it isn't. So that's why it, we get the panic. Okay. And with that, that's basically it for tuples in Zig. Uh, tuples are straightforward, they're pretty simple to use, uh, really flexible, they have a lot of features similar to arrays, and they can, uh, in, in, in the case of uh, concatenation, and even in the case of instantiation, as we saw here, when we instantiate an array, we can use a tuple literal, and it will be coerced into that array type. So there's a lot of flexibility between tuples and arrays in Zig, and uh, the tuple itself can be a, a really powerful tool when we're doing comp time metaprogramming and type reflection and generating code. Uh, it's, it's a really powerful tool given that we can have uh, elements of different types, okay? So uh, if I, I hope you find this uh, useful. Do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.